Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. In today's video, again, four amazing Bitcoin charts. We are making an all-time high on a really cool price scale. Yes, also giving a trading tip, a travel tip, some live advice, and of course, talking about the news and answering one of the questions, guys. Short but powerful video because today, Muay Thai classes, so I need to wrap it up really quickly from this beautiful tropical garden here in Phuket. Thailand. Let's jump into the charts. Bam. The first chart for today, guys, the four hour chart. Look how beautiful Bitcoin reached even the price of there, the top, let's see, uh, 57,600 US dollar. At the moment, we are at 55,700 US dollar. Maybe let's see on the one hour. We can zoom in a little bit over here, Bep, over there. Yes, 56,400. Uh, okay, when are we going to close this candle at 57K? Let that 57K exactly be the target I've been talking to you about now for a long time. Do you remember this chart that we uh, had on the screen every time? Let me see. Um, I will do the weekly copy, this one. I think that's the one. Yes, look. We broke that green line of resistance that I talked about. And the next target I told you was 57, 58K. And if you break that, we can even take it to 66,457 US dollar. So this breaking of this level that we now broke, 52,500 is a massive break. This is a weekly chart. So we need to close this candle, of course, uh, uh, in six days uh, above this line. But for now, if we look at the four hour signal over here, guys, it looks really beautiful. Uh, we are breaking it with the first candle. The second candle was indecisive. Now this third candle is uh, massively above it. 56,400 US dollar. Congrats to all the people uh, that listened to me and understood that they should have been buying Bitcoin. And also congrats to all the people that I told if we break out, look to the indicator setup that we use. If the candle will close above the yellow stepping line and you see the Bollinger Band going wide, yes, that is a beautiful moment to take a long. And that is a beautiful long over there now. Let's jump into way more important charts. A very important chart is this one. We can see here that the percent of uh, Bitcoin circulated supply on exchanges is drastically going down already since 2019. Since 2019, less and less Bitcoins are held on exchanges. There's even less Bitcoin at the moment held on the exchanges than we had on the top of 2017. So yes, people are becoming smarter. People are seeing and understanding what is happening. Just like the thing that is happening today again, I am talking about that in the news later with the BitForex. Keep your Bitcoins on your own self-custodial wallets, not your keys, not your Bitcoin. Very important that more and more people understand this. We can see here that we, um, that Y line, that we are uh, nearing that halving. If you look to the left on the chart, you can see the cycle peak. So that means the previous all-time high. So you can see that there is a possibility that we even break that previous all-time high before the halving. That would be the first time in history that we break the previous all-time high of 69K before the halving. Normally, we get a small dip during or after the halving, and then we go up and break that previous all-time high. But with this bullishness in the market, nobody knows there's a shitload of liquidity, new blood coming and streaming into the market that needs to own Bitcoin. Even the biggest banks now want to own Bitcoin. So even JP Morgan, that was in Davos saying, Bitcoin is a scam, Bitcoin is a bubble, Bitcoin is nothing, now stated publicly on television, hey, our bank is going to open a huge Bitcoin funds for the 1% wealthy people of JP Morgan. So even he now needs to confess Bitcoin is king. This chart is showing you the dips that you see normally during a bull market. On the left, you have the 2017 bull market, a dip of 40%, 34, 34, 40, 41, 31. I know these numbers always are different on every chart, but it depends from which moment they calculate it and if it's like hiking ashen candles or it's like normal candles, etc. But you get the picture. There is always runs and pullbacks. And these pullbacks are considered as crashes or as dips. Now, if you now look to 2021, same, we went up, 23% down, up, 15% down, up, 30% down, up, 23% down, up, 26% down, etc. And now this bull market, people are saying, oh, we didn't see a crash yet. Then you don't look at the charts. We went up, 22% crash. We went up, 20%, another time, 22, and another time, 22%. So we have seen crashes already. We can now go 
easily to the 60K level before we crash another 20% back to 50K. And yes, you will be screaming again, oh, we are crashing. While well, you should be zooming out and looking at this chart and, saying, and telling yourself, hey, that's not a crash. That's a healthy correction that we need to continue this bull market to even higher prices. That's how the markets work. You can't go directly up in a straight line. Here we can see the long-term Holler MVRV signal line. We are now at 2.5, that is that blue line. At a 2.5 level, the 2.5 level is exactly the level that we had at the previous bull market just before we went into the second part of that massive rally. So yes, we are a little bit earlier at a 2.5 level than we normally are. That normally happens after the halving in my opinion. But now, when that happens, that's very bullish. Just look to the left. The last time we passed that level in the upward moving, that was the second part of the bull market going drastically in the run, all the way up to 70K. So it's a very important signal. On the bottom, you can also see that orange part is still the phase that you can be accumulating. It's still a beautiful moment that you add some Bitcoins to your portfolio. When we get into the red area, please stop and start to distribute again, start to sell, because that's a very high risk. Okay, very cool chart. We have this chart, stock to flow uh, trading rule. Um, Plan B has staying already for years. You need to buy six months before the halving and you need to sell 18 months after the halving. So six months before the halving, we passed already. Now the only thing you need to re uh, remember is to sell 18 months after the halving and then you will be following that green line. That blue line is the profit you would have if you buy one Bitcoin and you hold that Bitcoin. That green line is the line that you would create if you buy six months before the halving and sell 18 months after the halving. The green line is outperforming that blue line. The red line is exactly what you don't need to do and that's what most people do that don't listen and watch my videos. So either the green or either the blue line follow one of these two strategies. On this chart, you can see the stock to flow comparison from gold to Bitcoin. Gold is at a stock to flow level of 58. Bitcoin from this halving will go into 121. That is scarcer than gold. And from there, the exponential will grow to 250, to 500 and to 1000. This is telling you that Bitcoin is way more scarce than gold because gold will get stuck at that 58 to 60, maybe 70 level. From April this year, Bitcoin will officially be scarcer than gold. And it will only be more extreme the longer Bitcoin will keep existing. So in 2026, 7, 8 and 2030, Bitcoin will be so much scarcer than gold that it's very stupid for you to stay in gold or fiat. You should be in Bitcoin. This is the gold of the 21st century. This is the gold that can create wealth for you, not the traditional one. Here you can see also the rich people understand exactly what I just told you. The gold spot ETFs are flowing empty. That's the black line on the bottom. Less and less and less people are invested in gold spot ETFs. More and more and more people are invested in Bitcoin spot ETFs. It won't take long that the Bitcoin spot ETF will overtake the gold spot ETF. We are already at $50 billion in Bitcoin spot ETFs. Gold is around 90, I think. This won't take long. People are selling their gold spot ETF to join the Bitcoin spot ETF because that's the gold of the 21st century. Please start to understand. Even the rich now start to understand. They are even doing this. You should be doing the same. I hope you really enjoy the charts. I love these kinds of charts with all this data. Yes, it was more than four charts. It was like six charts or something, but these charts just show you exactly where we are with Bitcoin, where we are towards the halving, how we are surpassing gold when it comes to scarcity and all of that stuff. Beautiful charts, beautiful data. Please, if you didn't understand these charts, watch these charts once more again, because you need to understand exactly what these charts are showing you. That is when you start to understand Bitcoin and that is when you understand that you need to treat Bitcoin as your call capital instead of fiat. Those shit coins that are being printed out of thin air. Bitcoin has a limited supply of 21 million. It will take another 116 years, 116, before the last Bitcoin will be mined. This will be in the year 2140. Please start to understand the scarcity of Bitcoin compared to gold and all the other assets on our world. You should be hedging your capital in 
Bitcoin. That's why all the huge investment companies and all the banks and all the governments and all the rich people in the world want to invest their capital in Bitcoin to protect their capital against inflation and in a better way than they were used to do with gold. Now they're using the digital gold of the 21st century called Bitcoin. Simple as that. Let's jump into the trading tip. The trading tip for today has to do with the news I'm going to talk about later, guys. Because one of these huge exchanges stopped existing and took all the funds of all their customers. A centralized exchange. So the trading tip for today, again, is not your keys, not your Bitcoin. The moment you store your Bitcoins in a custodial service, an exchange, or a bank, or any other centralized entity that is holding your Bitcoins, you don't have access to the private keys or to the seed phrase that it's not your bitcoin the only way to store your bitcoins in a very safe way is on your own software or hardware self-custodial wallets there's a lot of software wallets i have a complete list on that on the bitcoinfamily.com but i'm for example using green wallet on my telephone or a wallet Satoshi for doing lightning payments now and then, like small amounts of the wallet Satoshi, because that's a custodial wallet. We need to have non-custodial software wallets. And the best form of a non-custodial wallet, of course, is a hardware wallet like a Ledger or any of all the others, guys. So there's many options when it comes to storing your Bitcoins on a self-custodial wallet and still being able to trade. Because you don't need a centralized exchange to trade anymore. We now have decentralized exchanges. The best by far is Apex Pro. You connect your own wallet, your self-custodial wallet, where you hold your crypto to this exchange and you will be able to trade on that exchange. When that exchange stops existing, you still have full access to all your crypto because they are held on your own wallet, self-custody. So don't send your Bitcoins into these exchanges that are new and that are bright and that are shining with all kinds of uh, promotions of famous people. Because most of these new ones that don't exist already for five years or longer, they always have the risk that they will stop. Because of like law, because of liquidity, because of many problems they can face. Bybit is already here for a very long time. Already had three bull markets. So Bybit is a very strong exchange with a lot of liquidity. And even they need to leave the Netherlands, need to leave the United States. So the biggest part of your Bitcoins and your crypto assets should be on self-custody, on your own wallets, software or hardware, doesn't matter, or even paper wallets. Self-custody, full control to your private key, to your seed phrase, and all of that. Not your keys, not your Bitcoin. And yes, you can still trade on decentralized exchanges, very simple, with these software wallets. For example, MetaMask is also a software wallet. And you can trade with MetaMask on Uniswap or Apex Pro or many of these other decentralized exchanges. So please, stay safe. Don't put too much value on decentralized exchanges. That's a trading tip for today. The travel tip for today is that every country that you visit probably has a local sport that's really famous. In Thailand, it's Muay Thai try to participate in these sports. In Thailand, we have been training now two, sometimes three times a week doing Muay Thai, my middle daughter, Juna, and me. We both really like Muay Thai, not only because you get stronger and fitter, but also because it's like just really a nice technical sport. There's a lot of details that they can teach you. So there's always something to learn new. Every day there's a new move. Every day there's a new kick. Every day there's a new punch or a new block. You know, we just really love to be educating ourselves into these local new sports that are like worldwide famous, of course, Muay Thai. Every country has such a sport. So just try these sports. You know, and the beautiful thing about it is, it's not only that you get fitter and then stronger, but you meet other people as well. And mostly these trainers, these Muay Thai trainers, know all the things about Muay Thai and all the matches that you can go watch and what food you could eat and how to prepare. No, it's just a lot of fun. If you go to Thailand, do a few Muay Thai classes because you will really enjoy it. You will lose some kilos, you will burn some calories, but you really will enjoy it because all the people there are there to train very serious. And the best part, if you take your kids there, they learn to self-defense them, of course. Yes, they sometimes need some self-defense in the, the current world that we are living. So it's never bad to teach them a little bit of skills of elbow or something there. Give them in the 
that's, oh shit, that's the camera. <laughs> so that's the travel tip for today. Uh, every time when you visit a country, try the local sports over there. The question for today from one of the followers was, Didi, how can we put all our money from the bank account into bitcoins? We still need the bank account to pay social security, we need to pay uh, insurances, we pay mortgage, we need to pay the bills, we need to pay, and we do need the bank account for that. That is not true. We are insured as well as a family. We are paying this with our Bitcoin debit cards. We also do have a monthly cost. We pay that with our debit cards. We don't need a bank account. We have been traveling now eight years without a bank account. Do you really believe I would travel eight years all over the world, 42 countries, without being insured? Everything is possible without a bank account by now. There is no government that tells you you need to have a bank account. Why would you need to have a bank account? There is not like a law that tells you you need to own a bank account to be living in this country. If there is a law, then have that bank account and have zero fiat on that bank account. Put everything into Bitcoin and every month when you know 600 euros is going to be deducted from my bank account, exchange 600 euro worth of Bitcoins into your bank account, leave it there till the bank account runs to zero again. That's what I mean with don't have a bank account. You need to be all in Bitcoin. Treat Bitcoin as your core capital because Bitcoin will go up in value during these bull markets tremendously. So why would you keep it on a bank account that is like decreasing your purchasing power, your euros? You're buying less and less. All of that should be in Bitcoin as your core capital, as we are treating Bitcoin as a core capital. And every time, when that country or that government wants a little bit of your money, of your bitcoins, you exchange a little bit of those bitcoins into your euros, put them on your bank account and let them take that little bit. But don't store all your value on that bank account because your purchasing power is like disappearing by the day. That's why you should hedge all your capital on bitcoin. I'm not saying you need to end your bank account like we did. We don't need bank accounts anymore because we don't have this fixed house, mortgage and all that stuff. We just have variable costs that we want to make, like rent. We, all, we only have variable costs. So we pay, for example, the rent online with debit cards. So there is no bank needed for that. Groceries, we do with a debit card. All the stuff, insurances, we do with a debit card. So only when you need a little bit on your bank account, if you have a bank account, just put the amount on it that you really need there to be to pay your bills. But the rest, all the rest, please keep that in Bitcoin. And I know that your answer now will be, yeah, but there is no rest. You know, everything we earn goes into the cost. And that is exactly why you should be in Bitcoin. Because if you stay in euros or dollars, there will never be a rest capital. It will all be eaten by your government's inflation. As long as you stay in that asset, fiat currency, US dollar, euro, all the others, you will never have a reserve capital. That is why you need to start. Start with spending less to all the maturistic shit, put that in Bitcoin and your reserve capital will grow. And every time when you need a little bit, you put it on your bank to pay your bills, but you will see after one or two or three years, and definitely after four years, that your capital grew. That you are having a reserve capital instead of eating up all your capital. That is why you should be in Bitcoin and not in fiat. Exactly for that reason. The news for today is that sadly another exchange, Bitforex, stopped working on Friday last the 23rd. It just stopped existing. People didn't have access anymore. A couple of websites are still up and running because one of the sites says that the CEO stopped working for the company. But uh, we saw, of course, on the blockchain that they took around 57 million US dollar out of the cold storage wallet of Bitforex, uh, whereas we don't know. Who uh, has it? We don't know. Nobody's responding. They are not active on X anymore, on any social media. They don't let anybody know anything about them. So we really don't know what happened to Bitforex. I really don't know. But I have been warning all of you every time again and again and again. Don't trust all those new exchanges that are popping up with a shitload of liquidity because all of these exchanges are probably going to run into a shitload of problems with their governments, with their laws, and probably also with the liquidity because it's not like real liquidity. This is like fake market making liquidity that doesn't, that doesn't represent the real value of an exchange. So I would only trust centralized exchanges that show you the proof of your funds. 
There's a lot of exchanges. Even Bybit does it. If you go to Bybit, to your menu, you can find proof of funds. You click that and you can see that your funds definitely are held by Bybit in a certain wallet. That is what these exchanges need to do. All those exchanges that don't do that shit, don't trust them. Now a lot of people are ruined again. I saw tweets about people having the last 50,000 US dollar uh, from India on that exchange. Gone. You don't have access anymore. You won't get access anymore. If they run, if they do a rug pull, they are gone and it's very difficult to catch them because mostly people don't even know who the owners of these new exchanges are. So please be aware. A centralized exchange only use the trusted ones and even there, only put the capital there that you're prepared to lose. Not your keys, not your bitcoins. Very important sentence in this industry. And of course, I feel sorry for all those people, but more for the rest of the crypto industry, because these kinds of exchanges give a very bad name and taste to the rest of the crypto industry. And that is exactly what we don't need. That is why these AML, KYC, and all those other regulations are put on us as a community. Because these exchanges like FTX, Bitforex, all of that shit, they just scam people. Now, that was the news for today. Sad news, but let's move on. The last part of the video, the inspirational part, I got a lot of questions about the inspirational quotes that I'm using every time, and they are always like, I know it sounds so simple, but I have so much problems with just getting started, and you know, is it, it's not possible to change your life that fast and do it this quickly and directly, and like, it doesn't matter. It's not about how fast you move. Even if you want to move very slow, it's good. The secret is that you must not stop moving. Keep moving towards that goal, towards that target, towards that point in life that you want to change. Keep moving. Never stop moving. You don't need to do it like BAM directly. You can slowly move towards that point in life that you will be ready to take that huge decision of changing your life. Not now, not tomorrow. Slowly move towards that goal as long you keep moving. That is the most important part. Never stop and never walk back. Always move forward. Just keep moving very slowly, in a very slow pace. Keep visualizing all your dreams, keep manifesting all your goals and keep moving slowly towards those goals. At the end, you will reach those goals. And then it doesn't matter anymore if you did it quick or slow because then you reached your goal. And do you remember the tip of yesterday? Not only reaching the goal is important, but the whole path towards reaching the goal is even way more important because that made you change as a person. And some people need more time to slowly adjust to becoming a new person. So just keep moving slowly, but the most important part is that you never stop moving. So that's the live advice for the day. Whatever I'm talking about, whatever goal you want to set for yourself or want to reach, it's not about the pace. It's about starting to move and keep moving towards that goal. You will reach it. And everything you learn along that path is amazing. That will form you as a new person. Now, that was everything for today. I hope you really enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you think about the charts and about everything else? Thanks for watching. I wish you an amazing day. I'm going to go Muay Thai. See you tomorrow again. Bam.